Okay, so I'm gonna do a real quick video going over our last code review for linear data structures. This one being the queue shouldn't be too long, so you know what? Let's just go ahead and hop right into it. Just hop over to VS Code real quick, just like always, and start again with our humble node, just like our linked list and just like our stack. It's gonna start with basic integer data and a basic next pointer. It's all we need for our nodes. We can make them more complex, just like the rest of them, but for this purpose, just simplicity, no big deal. So default constructor, and then a uh, integer base constructor as well. So again, this is the exact same node class I use in my linked lists, and I also use in my stack as well. So no different there. There will be some differences here. This again is really kind of a mix of my linked list and my stack in a way so it's more in line with the linked list and the fact that there are three private variables as opposed to two with a stack those three being the front the rear and the length length again is going to be consistent across all three it just counts the number of elements in each data structure but the front and the rear here are going to be more in line with the linked list head and tail and it's basically the entry and exit of the data structure with the stack we simply push and remove from the top so there's only one actual entry and exit to the data structure but with a queue we end up actually needing both of them for well we don't technically need both of them but it makes things much more efficient if we have both of them and you'll see that as we get into the actual code now we also have our simple constructor here, just has a front and a rear as no pointers. Probably should have a length set to zero as well, honestly. Uh, yeah, if you just uh, set length to zero is what I'm not gonna do right now because I know the code's working. So not a big deal there. But here we have our Q deconstructor, then we have NQ, DQ or day Q, however you want to say it. I've, I've heard both. I honestly go with day Q more frequently. Could be wrong. If I'm wrong, correct me. No big deal. And then again, just like stack, we'll have peak. And then just like both of them will have a display to actually show the contents of all of them. So not a big deal going in. Um, I'm going to do a real quick look over at q.cpp. And you know what? Honestly, I'm just going to do it. It's bothering me, honestly. It's bothering me a lot. I can't spell. I'll do that and see if it compiles. I apologize for this, but um, it's just bothering me. Okay, compiles is fine. No big deal. So we'll come back to that later. But again, just want to initialize an actual length of zero there. Okay, <laughs> and now that that's done, now we can get to the actual CPP file and get to the actual code. So. Just like all the other ones, we're just using IO streams. We have access to uh, standard library stuff, C out, and Dell, all that good stuff. And then we're importing Q to H, not a big deal. Go through the deconstructor. This is just like the other two where we're gonna actually have a reference to a node at the very beginning. So I think uh, with linked list, we start at head. With stack, we start at top, but with our here we're going to start front and then we're just going to loop through continuously deleting our data until eventually we have none left we'll kick out set our rear to a null pointer therefore our front will be a null pointer rear will be a null pointer and we'll have a blank slate of a queue once we're done moving on from that we have our in queue some inserting data so we're going to pass in some integer data from the user and create a brand new object so this is actually brand new memory, so it doesn't actually have any association with our queue just yet, but we'll fix that in just a moment. For now, we know that we're inserting some data, so we're going to increase the length of the overall queue, and then we are going to do a check to see, hey, is it empty? If it is, that means it's the only element, so we just set the front and the rear to our current node, and we're done call it a day, we return, we're finished. If it's not the case though, then we will set rear next to our current, which basically means that we are adding something to the end of our queue, or actually, 
you never queue here. So essentially, let's say we had um, three at the front, one into a four, one into a five, and we want to push in or in queue in six. So our current rear is five. For rear next we'll need to enter current, so that's going to be a six here, and then we will adjust our rear from being five to six. Therefore, we've enqueued six into our queue, and should be good to go. So just add something to the rear of the actual queue, and that's about it. So DQ, DQ, however you want to say it, uh, is going to check if it's empty, just like all of our data structures do. If you've watched the video I did over a slide set for this, you'll notice that there is a mistake where I do not have my return statement here. Um, this is a very easy fix. It's just at, at a return statement in this if statement so that way you don't end up running any of this code. If you have an empty queue, if you do, you're going to try and delete some data that doesn't exist and probably have a really bad time with some seg faults. Again, just a very simple solution. Add the return statement. Make sure you don't run this code. Should be good to go. Now moving on, if it is not empty, then we need to decrement the length, adjust our count of elements, and then we have our track is set to the front and then we adjust our front to be the next one and then delete the original front so let's take a look at that so let's say we've been queued three points to a four a point to a five and we want to essentially DQ this three so we have a first in first out programming principle so therefore three was the first one in so it needs to be the first one out so our current front is three so we want front to be equal to front next, which is this four. So we adjust that. So four is now our front. Five is our rear. Node here is a reference to where front is. So they're both pointing to this three. So we just delete node. And all of a sudden, this is our new queue. Four, five, and that's it. It's not a big deal. Both pretty simple. And again, this NQ DQ is going to be our FIFO restriction to this which is essentially a linked list. So that's about it for adding and removing data. Moving on, we have peak. This is just going to, peak essentially is a view for or return. If you want to change this to an integer, you can return the actual data, but some way to access the next in line data to be removed from the list. And by list, I mean either stack or queue or linked list, whatever you're well, link list, it doesn't really work because there's no life or FIFO principle. This is for if you're doing a stack, you're going to peak the top because the top will be what comes off. And for Q here, we'll peak the front because that is what will be removed immediately. So if we want to do a check to make sure a specific data attribute is at the front before we uh, DQ it, then we can use a peak and then choose to DQ or not to DQ that is a question uh, once we actually determine what's at the front. So in this case, I'm just printing out front data. That's good enough for now. And the display, just like linked list and stack, starting at the front, looping through, printing the data, not a big deal. So in this case, we will swap over to main.cpp, in which case we are creating a queue named A, and queuing a one and a two to it, and then simply displaying it. So real quick, I will oops, do this. And I end up with a one and a two. The one get enqueued, two gets enqueued. So the moment that I do this DQ, I should end up with just a two in my queue. And then if I want to do a little bit more like maybe this uh, in Q a uh, 45, why not? Then I should end up with a 245. And then if I want to say DQ three times, it should throw, <coughs> excuse me. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, right. Now that's working perfectly fine. I forgot that I added three elements, so I need to DQ a fourth one to end up 
throwing my exception. And there's the exception saying no data to delete, so it doesn't go in and try and do anything it doesn't need to do. So now it's just fine. Now if I want to get rid of uh, say these two and I want to do a dot peak, I should see what I am about to delete. And this can be a 45. So 45, we DQ the one, we DQ the two here. The next thing to be deleted is the 45. If I elect to DQ one more time for that and display, there should be nothing there. I think I better to say do this. Yeah, so there'll be a one and then a two and a forty-five. When we DQ and peak, I should end up printing out a two and then Oops. Not bad. Yep, so we have two. We dequeue it, we display the whole thing, that two is no longer there, and then we have a 45 left over. So that's pretty much it in regards to our queue. They're very, very simple. Essentially, it is a FIFO restricted singly linked list. And that's about it. It has a head and tail in form of front and rear. If you want to change front and rear to be head and tail, you can do that. No big deal. It is an abstract data structure, so there is no one way to do this. However, the FIFO principle is actually a necessity for a queue unless you want to be a person that says it's LILO, which is last in, last out. It's the exact same thing. They mean they literally mean the exact same thing, but I digress. Um, hopefully, overall, that helps explain how a queue works, how they relate to both linked list and stacks, and hopefully you learned something. So that's going to be it for me in this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, and I'll see you later. Bye.